I can't believe they're making me follow Tom Longu and then Bob Thurman and then the Long Show. I, uh, they set up a real challenge for me. But I think I know the first thing that I can report on that will be just as inspiring and just as exciting. Maybe some of you have heard, but I know you've been out here all day long marching in this cold weather. The spirit of resistance is alive and well inside Tibet. Today, several hundred monks marching from Drepung Monastery were stopped at a checkpoint on their way to central Lhasa, marching to Lhasa to petition for the release of Tibetans who had been arrested during celebrations uh, for the, the award of the Congressional Gold Medal for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. At the same time, Approximately, from what we know, they're always it's difficult to, to know about these reports, but we've heard nine monks and two other lay people, patriotic Tibetans inside, in Lhasa, demonstrating in the Barkor area, the same spirit of resistance 49 years later from the original March 10th, 1959 uprising against Chinese occupation. So the spirit, the spirit of March 10th is very much alive and well inside Tibet. And I think there's so much, so much inspiration and so much energy there. If we, if we know that Tibetans, despite the risks, despite the repression, despite the violence that they face, if they can stand up, if they can speak up, if they can demonstrate in the heart of Lhasa, certainly it calls on us to be strong and raise our voices louder and be stronger and keep raising our voices for Aung Zen, saying free Tibet, saying we will not give up, we are with you, we stand in solidarity, and indeed we do because today, March 10th, everywhere around the world, some 25 cities in Calgary, in Ottawa, in Montreal, in Vancouver, Toronto, Madison, Boston, here in New York, in Washington DC, San Francisco, Minneapolis, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, Los Angeles, Kathmandu, London, Paris, Zurich, Athens, Edinburgh, Berlin, Oslo, Stockholm, Madrid, Milan, Delhi, Bangalore, Tokyo, Taiwan, Warsaw, And of course in Dharamsala. In Dharamsala with thousands of course demonstrated with renewed vigor. In Dharamsala actually maybe the most exciting thing. The Tibetan People's Uprising Movement launched its historic return march to Tibet. An unprecedented coalition, a unified coalition of, of Tibetan Youth Congress, Tibetan Women's Association, Kuchu Sung, the National Democratic Party of Tibet, and Students for Free Tibet India launched this historic return march to Tibet. They left Dharamsala, vowing to return to their homeland, 101 strong, surrounded by hundreds more supporters, vowing that they will not stop until they reach Tibet. A hundred and one courageous, patriotic Tibetans who demand our solidarity, but we offer it, right? And also today, in Olympia, the site of the first Olympics two millennia ago, in Olympia, Greece, the Tibetan Freedom Torch was lit. I don't know if you've heard about the Tibetan Freedom Torch Relay. The Chinese have their torch relay. That they're taking this torch all around the world, including across Tibet and up Everest, to signify their sovereignty over Tibet. We reject that. We know it's a lie. We know it's propaganda. And so Tibetans have kicked off their own torch relay. And Tibetans and supporters will be taking this, this Tibetan Freedom Torch from the site of the first Olympics 
in Olympia, Greece, taking to some 50 cities all around the world. And, and just, just uh, so, so you can hear from, uh, we, don't have, we don't have Tenzin Dorji from SFT here today, unfortunately, he's in Olympia. Uh, and he was there in Olympia this morning to light the Tibetan Freedom Torch along with supporters from the Tibetan Youth Association of Europe and many other Tibetan supporters. But I do have a, a patriotic young Tibetan here from SFT, Sogil, who's going to read uh, the statement that Tenzin Norti released this morning on this historic lighting of the Tibetan Freedom Torch. I stand here as a Tibetan. A Tibetan whose homeland has been invaded. A Tibetan whose past and present has been stoned. When my spirit flies high as I stand in this ancient city of Olympia and reminisce about the past glories of my country and the future hopes of my people. Over two millennia ago, when the Olympic Games began at this very spot, Tibet was a sovereign and independent state. Today, Tibet is an illegally occupied nation, and Tibetans have become strangers in our own land. Even as China prepares to host the Games this August, and runs its tainted Olympic torch to hordes of countries, hoping to spread its propaganda, Beijing runs a monstrous and sinister structure of repression in Tibet designed to obliterate Tibetan culture and, identify and identity from the face of the earth. But today, my spirit flies high as I stand in this ancient city of Olympia and light the Tibetan Freedom Torch. This torch is a symbol of the hopes and aspirations of the Tibetan people for freedom and justice, and the commitment of people around the world to helping achieve this goal. The, game, the, the flame of Tibetan freedom will burn in all our hearts until we Tibetans are once again free to determine our future in our own land. The Tibetan Freedom Torch will be carrying a message of truth and resistance through more than 50 cities between March 10th and August 8th. On the day when the Olympics begin in Beijing, the Freedom Torch will reach Tibet. On behalf of Tibetans living in Tibet and in exile, we demand not just our right to participate in the Olympics, but also our right to self-determination and our right to rule our own homeland. A year ago, when I stood at Mount Everest Base Camp in Tibet and protested the trial ascent of China's Olympic torch to the peak of the world's highest mountain, I felt the power of the Tibetan people desire to be free. Now, as I stand here in ancient Olympia, I feel that time has come for Tibet to be free. And no force in the world can stop us from becoming free. The future belongs to Tibet. And so I know we're all, we're all with them in Olympia, we're with them in Dharamsala, and we're with them in Lhasa and across Tibet today, unified as a movement stronger than ever. I feel very privileged to be a supporter standing in solidarity with Tibetans everywhere. And I'm very proud to see that, that there are so many supporters here today. I think more than we've seen in past years. And I know the movement supporting the Tibetan people's struggle for independence is gaining in strength and will continue to gain as the Olympics approach. And of course, as we've heard so many times before, but as we're understanding more and more each day, the opportunity that the Olympics, the 2008 Beijing Olympics, the opportunity that that provides us is something like we've never seen before. It's an unprecedented platform for this movement. We stand on a platform where the, the whole world is going to be watching Beijing, the whole world is going to be watching the Chinese government, and the whole world is going to be looking towards Tibet and looking towards this movement and looking at us understanding for, for the first time how, how strongly, how truly Tibetans still burn with, with the, the, the torch of freedom in their hearts. And we supporters, we NGs, we non-Tibetan supporters, we stand with you. And we will continue to stand with you until the Olympics and beyond, I promise.
And as the Olympics approach, this is truly an unprecedented opportunity. So I call on all of you, all of the supporters here, but also all the Tibetans, to recognize that as long as the spirit of resistance is alive and well as it is inside Tibet, as long as people take the risks that they're taking inside Tibet, that we need to stand up and show solidarity like never before.